Hi, I'm Dr. Narala Jacobi, the SIBO doctor. Practitioners often interpret a flatlining breath test result as hydrogen sulfide SIBO. In this short video, I discuss the causes of a flatlining breath test result. Hint, hint, it's not always hydrogen sulfide. And I also demonstrate the difference between a true flatline and a false flatlining breath test result. Let's begin by looking at the gases that can be produced by organisms in the digestive tract and that can be directly measured um, on a breath test. We have hydrogen gas that's typically produced by proteobacteria in the small intestine, but can be really produced anywhere in the digestive tract. We have also methane that we're checking for that's produced by Methanobrevibacter smithii, a type of archaea, and hydrogen sulfide. But hydrogen sulfide cannot yet be measured on a breath test. On this graph, we see that hydrogen that's produced by bacterial fermentation in the small intestine, um, or, or really anywhere in the digestive tract, can be used to produce other types of gases, namely the methane, also hydrogen sulfide, and acetate. Again, we cannot measure for hydrogen sulfide or really acetate either on a breath test. We're really just looking for hydrogen and methane. But this graph helps to visualize the gas dynamics that, can, that prevail in the small intestine and in the large intestine where gases can be interchangeable or, or produced by hydrogen. Let's have a look at a normal breath test. So what we have here is baseline uh, a testing uh, or a sample being taken every 20 minutes and up to about 100 minutes is the testing window for SIBO. And anything after that is considered the large intestine. And when we see hydrogen, we want to have that hydrogen be, uh, if we're looking at SIBO, something has to happen in that test window. And particularly for hydrogen, we want to see a rise of 20 parts per million in order to be uh, considered SIBO by about 100 minutes. Anything after that, we're thinking there is more fermentation in the large intestine, and oftentimes this is normal. So what we see here is a perfectly normal uh, rise of hydrogen where it's single digit, and then as the transition zone approaches, we're starting to see a little bit more fermentation here, and that's perfectly normal. For methane also, we see single digits here, and anything below 10, uh, with the absence of constipation is considered normal. Sometimes when we're talking about methane, it's a little bit more tricky, but that'll be in a different video. So we're really concentrating basically on differentiating between normal and abnormal test results when it comes to flatlining and possibly hydrogen sulfide today. So this is, for all intents and purposes, a totally negative uh, breath test result. If you're suspecting that your patient has SIBO and you get a test result like this, you may want to follow this up with a different type of test sugar, like glucose or fructose. This is what a true flatlining breath test result looks like. What we're looking at here is hydrogen in the single digits or like never really rising above one. Sometimes we see it at two. And we also see zeros for methane. Now, typically what this could mean is that it's negative, that you actually don't have um, a patient that has SIBO because we're not seeing a rise of gases. Now, if you have a patient that has terrible diarrhea and has classic symptoms of SIBO, what might be happening in this case is that the hydrogen is siphoned off to make hydrogen sulfide, as we saw in the graph before. It can do that, and it's not going to methane. If you have a case of a patient that has diarrhea, this may be happening, that you're actually looking at hydrogen sulfide, but because we cannot measure that, we are just basically assuming there is some hydrogen sulfide production, especially if you have classic SIBO symptoms, diarrhea, potentially even uh, rotten egg smelling, flatulence, uh, burning symptoms, all kinds of classic hydrogen sulfide symptoms. This is really a classic flatlining result. Let's now look at what sometimes people think is a flatlining result. So here you see we have still single digits, although this is a little bit higher than we would want for a flat line um, for hydrogen, where we see 
the four here at the 120 minute mark but it, for all intents and purposes we see twos ones threes and sometimes we have practitioners tell their patients this is hydrogen sulfide this is very unlikely to be hydrogen sulfide on this test result because why we see methane uh, actually quite elevated and therefore that hydrogen that may have been here and may have been positive has gone over to methane production so really important differentiating factor is is, is are both methane and hydrogen extremely low Again, remember that it's possible that this is a negative breath test result. Um, in this case, it's not a negative breath test result because we're having uh, some methane uh, rises here. So always ask the question, what is your patient doing or experiencing in terms of symptoms before you conclude that it is a flatlining breath test result? Sometimes people just look at the graph and think it's uh, flatlining. No, the numbers really matter here. So in summary, hydrogen sulfide SIBO should only be suspected if the patient has a true flatline test result and also has diarrhea and other SIBO symptoms. This means that if a patient has a flatline test result but is more constipated, you may want to look elsewhere. You may want to do a stool test or other types of diagnostic workup to see what else is going on because Classic hydrogen sulfide SIBO has to have a component of diarrhea. Perhaps in the future when we have a breath, te uh, breath test that also measures hydrogen sulfide, we'll see more nuances with hydrogen sulfide. But for the purpose of using a flatlining test result to diagnose hydrogen sulfide, you also need to have other SIBO symptoms be present and you need to have diarrhea present. And sometimes we have to accept that test results are just negative. If SIBO is suspected, you need to follow up with a glucose or a fructose breath test if you have a flatlining test result because the other uh, possibility is that this particular patient may not have bacteria in the small intestine that ferment lactulose readily. So for those patients, again, if you're flatlining or um, it's just not showing a rise at all, you may want to follow up with a different type of test sugar just to ensure that you've really left no stone unturned when it, come, when it comes to diagnosing SIBO. And also start looking for other causes for a patient's symptoms. Again, if you have a patient that's flatlining but doesn't have diarrhea or other types of SIBO symptoms. If you've uh, want to learn more about hydrogen sulfide and also how to treat hydrogen sulfide patients both in terms of SIBO and LIBO or large intestinal bacterial overgrowth you might want to consider doing the SIBO mastery program which also entitles you then to be listed as a SIBO doctor approved practitioner so we hope you enjoyed this presentation and stay tuned for other uh, test explanations